What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to How to Human. It has been a little while. I said, I think on the previous episode, with summer and kids' activities and just the whole summer break, it's very hard to keep some of the podcasting and other things uh, in order as far as scheduling and releasing the amount of episodes I want to release. But anyway, jumping right into it, um, and there will be more episodes with my wife and I where we're discussing entrepreneurship from my end and then corporate business world and, and high-level leadership roles from her end. But today... Excuse me. I wanted to talk about a couple of things. And when I do these solo episodes, I want to be very specific. And I'm working on organizing and focusing on the things that I think will bring the most value to the entrepreneurs that listen or those that listen that aren't quite an entrepreneur but want to get to that level or are working towards that level or just want to maintain their nine to five and want to maintain their corporate structure, but also simultaneously dip a toe, boop, into the entrepreneur pool. And I have my iPad here. I'm going to reference it here shortly. But uh, just also, if you're listening on audio, go to the YouTube channel if you want some of the visuals that are going to start appearing on some of the, the video or some of the podcasts. I have always been a podcaster first, but to make it more engaging for the visual, you know, person that decides to go to YouTube, um, I will have some things that I'll probably start referencing in the episodes to make it just kind of hit better. So it's how to human, if you just YouTube, you know, search, uh, how to human podcast, Robert Garza, you'll find it there. Uh, you can also go to the website now. I have robertgarzamedia.com. You can book a call with me. You can just uh, find all the links to the podcast, to the newsletter, more importantly there, uh, subscribe, give me your email. Just let's become friends and then join the the journey that I'm going on now to try to package everything that I have done personally over the last uh, 10 plus years and hope that it helps you avoid a lot of the pitfalls and mistakes that I made along the way, whether you're trying to do, because I feel like I've done it all, right? Whether you're trying to be some sort of independent hotshot driver or you're trying to teach kettlebell conditioning classes or get into that world at any point. My wife can talk a lot about uh, you know working in the fitness world independently. Uh, or you want to be a podcaster or you want to be a video editor, content creator, or you really want to run ads for companies or local markets and you want to do SEO and you want to build websites for them and Again, the list could go on. So there's a lot to package. There's a lot to, well, there's a lot to unpack, but there's a lot to just bring to the show that I want to just get focused on. And focus is actually one of the, the key things that I want to talk about today. And here since the last episode, I've had some interesting conversations. And one, well, it doesn't have to be specific, but I mean, a, a great conversation with my sister-in-law. I, you know, we hang out all the time. I have family now that we're where we live now. That's extremely close, and we get to get the kids together, and my nieces and, and, and nephews and stuff get together with the twins, and we all hang out. So I get to talk to my brother more, which is another one. So talking to my brother and my sister-in-law, talking to a good friend recently who has a service-based business, and then talking to what is a new friend, essentially, and, and someone I did a, a consult with um, to talk about their first three years in business <clears throat> excuse me, and where they are now, currently, and where they want to get to, and then try to to figure out where the holes in the strategy, if there even is one, are so that we can fill them, figure it out, get people in place that can help, you know, with those, those roles or, or those um, hurdles for them. <clears throat> and this was, that was the most recent one. That was about two or three days ago from the recording of this podcast that we sat. And it was, I imagine it would be a half hour, hour, uh, you know, consult conversation, which again, you can book a call with me if you want to do a Zoom call with me to talk about some of these things. But we talked for almost two hours and we could have kept going. Like, and it would have been a great podcast too had we recorded it. But uh, somebody who I'd only met twice in passing actually made a connection through somebody, a mutual, a mutual acquaintance. And, uh, you know, we just got the chat and chopping it up. And anytime that I see a young entrepreneur doing his own thing or her own thing, I love just talking about how's it going, what's working, what's not working. Like, is there anything I can, I always want to be of service, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And uh, I met this person back in December of last year and I didn't even live here at the, at the time. And then fast forward a couple of months, we ended up moving to this area and that's, where I go now to, to you know, uh, receive his services. And I'll get into specifics, you know, if and when we start working together a little bit more uh, closely so that I can, because I'm going to take the things that now we do together and also include that into what I'm talking about now because some of the things that I've done, I've done in the past and it's been a while back and there's no better way to get uh, the point across, I guess, on anything than when you're kind of doing it at the same time or, you're, or you just did it because you can, you know, it's really easy to recall those things. But for him... And this goes to everybody that I've talked to who's had a service-based business. Myself, I mean, I've had my own service-based business. When we talk about cryotherapy and, you know, the business that I had with some uh, friends and business partners back uh, from 2016 to 2018, I believe it was. <clears throat> Excuse me. I really got to drink something else other than uh, 
Dr. Pepper Zero when I do the podcast. It kind of gives me like this Flemish thing. But anyway, we sat and we talked and there's there's one thing that every entrepreneur has in common and it doesn't matter if it's year one, day one, or a lot of times year 10, right? That you're just trying to do everything on your own and you want to wear all the hats and it makes sense. You don't have the budget or the funds to you know delegate some of these roles and you go from being uh, the, the technician, as I believe it was referenced in the E-Myth or the E-Myth Revisited that I, I recently read, which is a great book. I'm glad I finally read all of it and didn't just skim through it and got the spark notes. But, you know, you take somebody who's a mechanic or you take somebody who, you know, somebody that does uh, hair, women's hair really well or men's hair for that matter, or does a, a pick a service, right? And you're working for a company and you're doing a really good job at it. You know, you're a master at the fill in the blank. And then you see what, you know, the, the people that you work for, the company, charges the customer for the service and you're like, I can do that. I know I can do that really well. I know that I can make a ton of money if I went out on my own and did it. And then you do go out on your own and you do it. And then you realize that you went from being the technician who's really good at this this thing, this craft we'll call it, to now you're running a business. Now you're a businessman, right? Which you weren't very proficient at and you weren't a master at. So you go from having to just provide the service to hiring a staff, getting your, your, your building your location, handling all the permits, you know, who's going to do payroll, who's going to do, do we have HR, do we have legal, who's, who's, who's filling all of those roles also, who's doing the hiring, you know, and, and then you go and you unpack it all and you sit down and you're like, wow, that's a lot to do and I don't know how to do it all. So you start learning how to do it, you start working, you know, or wearing all the hats as you're still working in the business and you've become basically a nine to fiver for yourself, which it's a step in the right direction in my opinion, but not ideally where most, you know, serious entrepreneurs want to be. They don't want to be working in their business, right? They want to be working on their business. So I'm going to reference my iPad here. And there's a lot of things that people don't take into consideration, I think, when they start something like this, especially if you're taking on a brick and mortar location. And, you know, I can speak to this because I did the same thing. And, um, I want you guys that are listening, whoever it is, guy, gal, it doesn't matter. When I say guys, I hope I can use these broad terms on the show. I hope some of you that know me understand that, hey, we're just going to talk the way we talk. I'm not really worried about offending anybody by these terms. So I'm going to say that once and only once. But if you just sit and think about all the things that need to be done when you embark on this journey, it'll overwhelm you, right? So you probably just don't think about it. You're kind of like, I'm just going to, and I'm famous for this myself, like ready, fire, aim kind of thing. You just get into it. And as the problems present themselves, we will figure them out. We have to, we will. It's a part of the plan or it's a part of the journey and it is what it is. So, and it's so difficult to unpack because there are so many layers to it, but there's a great app. And I'm going to try to mention some of these apps that I utilize to try to, uh, you know, brain map and take notes and organize you know, all, everything that I try to do and, and put into to words, videos, and podcasts, and into, you know, actionable plans for the people that I work with. But there's a, an app called uh, MindNode. So Mind, like your mind, Node. And it's, uh, I believe it's on all Apple devices, right? Or I'm sure it's probably in, in Android as well. But it's perfect on the iPad, especially if you have either the Magic Pencil or the actual Apple one, which is phenomenal, or any other pencil you might want to get from Amazon. I'm sure they work just fine. But... What I did is when I wanted to mind map a young business, right? So uh, this is, uh, I titled it the young business mind map. And I'm going to take it, okay. So if you're looking at it on YouTube here, and if you're not listening, I mean, I'm sure you can you can visualize it. So it's just a mind map and it might not, okay, let's see, gonna, there's too much light behind the iPad. That's fantastic. I'm going to do it to where I can screen share next time. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open the first, basically what I did was this individual was has been in business three years. So I mapped out what any young business could plan to uh, incur or run across in the first three years of business. And I, if, if you saw, I opened the mind map. It's much larger now. Man, the light behind it is not going to let that shine. Is it? Is it? It is not. Well, that didn't go as planned. It's too bright. Regardless, it is much bigger Maybe if I flash it, can I oh, can I turn it to here? This is great podcasting. If I have it at an angle, you can actually kind of see it. But if you're watching on YouTube, it's a very, very long uh, spider web of, of basically just lines going to other lines, going to other lines, because at the very top of it, and it's not in any particular order, but I think the way I ended up typing it all out when I was doing it as it was coming to mind, because I actually wrote these out on another app with my pencil, because I've been getting into a really fun habit of going back to writing instead of typing. I'm a fast typer. I, I love to type. 
I have um, this case that's magnetic with this Logitech keyboard that goes really well together with the iPad when you're on the go, when you're, you know, just want to travel without the laptop and just keep everything minimal. It's the, the iPad has become one of my favorite tools for organization and note taking, but writing it. So using another app. So let's go ahead and plug this one called, uh, what was it called? Standby Freeform. Freeform is a f fantastic app. It's kind of like a just a uh, white env empty canvas you can zoom in and out of and just write, sketch, draw, whatever, doodle. I'm a big visual learner, so it helps me a lot. And I've been doing that for the past about two weeks, probably since the last time I dropped a podcast. And I'm turning those sketches, doodles, and just you know brain dumps uh, that I write out with a magic pencil into then actionable plans for myself to create frameworks for anybody that I'm talking to that books a call on the website, robertgarzamedia.com, link is in the description, or somebody that I'm already working with in the real world right now as an actual uh, client. Because for me, it just helps. I just like seeing things. And I, I love people that do a good job on YouTube or anywhere of doodling their ideas as they're explaining things and whatever. Maybe you don't like it, but that's just the way I work. So if I go back into my node, at the very top of the of the list here is the business plan itself. And not even just the recent conversations, but it's interesting how many people I've talked to that don't have any idea of what the actual business plan is going to be. And I can recall back to when we were uh, going to launch this cryotherapy business, we had some people, at least one, who was very familiar with at least how to structure a business plan. They had been working, you know, corporate retail for a very long time. So they worked in that world. I had also worked retail for a long time, but not really on like the higher management level, just kind of lower management and not, 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 it was more customer focused, inventory focused. It wasn't very like business focused. So, and plus, one of the hats I loved wearing at the beginning and still to this day was the marketing hat, was the marketing, advertising, you know, doing all the network nights with the Chamber of Commerce, going out there and building relationships with the rest of the local market because that, as we'll get into in later episodes and the rundown of this episode is very important in the growth of your business, especially in a local market. This is separate sort of from any kind of digital business as you can maybe call the podcast or, or digital courses and calls and Zooms and all that, but it still will work similarly and we'll get into that later. But as I go down here, you know, at the top, we have business plan. And then I drew from that your target market, right? Your competitive landscape, the pricing strategy and growth plans. Just those four points alone should have some pretty significant deep thought in right from you if you're let's just pretend that you listening are the business owner of this business that we're talking about and for the you know sake of the conversation let's just say let's say that you're opening a uh man i have no so many people that have various businesses and i don't know which one i want to pick on to try to make an example out of that because it'll work for all of them but let's just say that you're um, oh, okay. Uh, we have a good friend who actually just moved to this area as well, who used to be a own a salon. Used to own a ton of salons, and she recently uh, sold the entire thing, all of her locations, all of her whole brand, her whole business. And so I'm just going to use that. So let's just say that she was doing hair at first, and then it grew into this business where she's no longer working in it. She's working on the business, and it grows from one location to several. Let's just say a dozen, because I think it was around that. And when she was opening the first one, she had to think to herself, okay, well, who's my target market? And then he's like, women, you know, women between 30 and 55 that, you know, dye their hair consistently or have cuts or whatever, whatever. What's the competitive landscape? Like, well, who's around me? Who's doing similar, you know, services? How far am I from the next person that offers a similar service? The pricing strategy, am I just going to take, you know, the average of all the people in the area, if there are any or many, and then just land somewhere in the middle. How do I factor into that? Which that is one of the most important topics. Am I premium? Am I like cheap, cheapo depot kind? Because I want a lot of foot traffic, but then we know what those kind of customers might be like versus the premium ones. And then the growth plan. Once you've got your, you know, once you're got your feet rolling, the wheels are turning, how do I go from where I started to whatever the next level is going to be in order for me to get more stylist in here or maybe expand locations, which will probably be way later on down the line. And I, I am trying to keep these episodes at around half an hour. So we're about 15 minutes in and I'm just going to run through the main points that then branch out into other ones. So we have the business plan, the location, uh, licenses and permits and perfect example. I didn't, I wasn't planning on using a, you know, woman's salon, but in that one, you're going to have your local permits, state permits, right? So you got to think about these things, uh, qualified staffs, price and structures, customer service, branding, website, social media presence, online reviews, SEO for, you know, local SEO partnerships, accounting systems, inventory management, customer databases. Those are the main points 
And there are more, but as I was writing this out and as I was, you know, just kind of eager and excited to do this podcast and kind of put them all out on audio and video and then put them down in my mind map so that I can later go back and refine this because most things are about doing it and then iterating, right? You're going to do, you're going to try something and then you can iterate from the thing that you did and it's much easier because you already did it. So you know how to kind of tweak it and fine tune it. So to go back up now, uh, after business plan, now I'm going to go over the, the little parts that branch out from the main, the main, uh, bullet points that you should be thinking as an entrepreneur or as a business owner. And that's going to be location, right? Visibility and accessibility, your licenses, locals and state, qualified staff, hiring, training, pricing structure, services, pricing, product pricing, and then your customer service, you know, in-shop experiences, uh, aftercare services, branding, your logo, your color scheme, your shop aesthetic, the website, who's going to make uh, the website, right? Who's going to design it? What kind of information is going to be on it? Can people book online? Social media presence? Who's doing the regular posting engagement? Uh, reviews. Reviews are so important because word of mouth is going to be one of the best reasons and, and biggest reasons why your business grows, especially in a local market and especially with something like a hair salon, for instance, as we're using in the example, because they're going to be able to tell their friends and tell their sisters and their tias and their moms and whoever, and that's going to be big for the business. Uh, that goes into you know local SEO, uh, local relationships, partnerships, local businesses, cross promotions, uh, your accounting, who's going to do the, who's your CPA, who's doing expense, payroll, taxes, income, all of that, who's managing the PL, who's looking at those numbers on a regular basis, your inventory, are you doing, you're selling other products to go along with ha uh, hair care or anything else that you do in there, product tracking, uh, reordering, inventory in general, inventory tracking, SKUs, and then lastly at the bottom, customer database. So are you emailing people? What's the, how many points of contact do you have with them? How, how and when do you take their contact info? Loyalty program, how do you reward these people for coming to your studio and then you know coming back and how do they refer others and so on and so forth. So there's a ton of points in these first you know three years that you have to consider when you're thinking about what's the business plan, what's the growth strategy, and before you can even think about how big you want to grow it, do I have enough pieces in place to just get it off the ground? And a lot of times, a real entrepreneur, no shots fired at those that you know think that they are but haven't maybe gotten to this point yet, and you might not even want to do a brick and mortar, but I encourage you to stick around and keep you know listening to episodes that might revolve more around that because I do know a lot of people that aren't just trying to do something digital. They're trying to do something in their local market and they want to put, you know, uh, roots in where they are and they want to grow from where they are and they want to maybe start a family business or they just want to create something where they are and, and that's their, that's their dream. That's their goal, at least for now. These things will tie into digital services and products for sure. So in, in order to start, a lot of us just kind of start because a good uh, rule of thumb for any entrepreneur is to just start with what you have, start with what you have. And if you have a limited, uh, limited knowledge set or skill set, you start with that, right? You find your location, you find this, you find maybe somebody you can work with. that's going to join you in on it. You, you get the whole, you got the, get the, the, the top of the, of this, um, mind map ready, the, the somewhat of a business plan and your location and your permits and you go, and then you start and you start making money and people are coming in and then you have to start rolling into the other things, you know, your um, SEO and your social, social, you know, posts and, and so on and so forth. And you're going to run into the roadblocks and, you know, there's so much to unpack here, but I want to encourage those that are listening that haven't quite done all of that yet. Maybe you're somewhere at the top where you just opened up or you've been, even this particular business that I'm referencing has been open three years and they're, you know, coming to a point where they're doing a lot of work, like they're hustling that, you know, business is good they're they're making their money they're you know establishing themselves in the community but there's a lot of competition so how do you handle that competition and how do you make sure that you essentially win in the sense of being in business the longest having the best track record having the best reviews you know having the best um just when somebody thinks of this particular service they think of you so essentially branding right brand, brand recognition or awareness um it's a lot to take in it's a lot to think about and it's taken me you know a decade to just go from hurdle to hurdle and obstacle to obstacle, trying to unpack it all and constantly being on the internet, just searching for the answers, finding the right people and digital mentors, as I call them, to help steer you in the right direction and buying tons of courses. Like I, people know I'm not a huge proponent of um, traditional education for, for myself, but for most entrepreneurs in general, you're not going to really learn like you know, and you might, but this is just from my experience because I did do community college. I did do some university, and by some I mean one semester. And then I got the real world experience. So I, out of those three, 
you're not going to tell me or no one's going to tell me that had I stuck with, you know, whatever amount of a tr traditional education, I would have known more in those, let's say, three years. So three years of a combined uh, community college and um, university, and then the first three years of actually getting the business you know, plan that you wanted to start started and then opening the business and operating for three years. There's no way I would have learned as much. Granted, you know, maybe the business would have stayed open longer, but there's a lot of other circumstances that I may not get into detail of why that business dissolved. But in those first two, especially years, learned way more, had way more, you know, connections with great people, learned a lot about business in general, uh, had great relationships with people in the community versus had I done the opposite and gone to school for those two years instead, you can't convince me that there would have been a better you know, trajectory for learning about business than actually just doing business. And uh, I'll leave it there for now. I'm going to come back and we're going to cover some of these topics as I start kind of putting some of this down into a easy to digest uh, guide, I guess is the best way to put it, or a playbook or whatever adjective I choose to use because it, it's about repetition. It's about trying and then retrying and then iterating on the things that you tried and retried and then as you get better at it whatever you write and whatever you come down with and whatever you implement gets better as well and then going back to the top of the podcast wanting to be of service I think that for me especially right now like I'm in my early 30s and it's not too much different than when I was in my early 20s like I wanted to be an entrepreneur I wanted to start businesses I wanted to to work for myself essentially and I have been doing that since then I just don't have the current uh, ambition to go start another brick and mortar business of any sort right now. I just can't think of one that I would want to start. Maybe buy a business, maybe buy something that's already operational, something that somebody's wanting to let go because they're retiring out of it or they're whatever, they want to move on to something else. That sounds way more appealing than starting from scratch, but I do know a lot of people that have started businesses recently, brick and mortar services, you know, and they love it. And that's the thing that they want to do. And I just hope that the knowledge that I have helps the people who are in those shoes that just started a business, whether it's, you know, one to three years or even one to five years. And then those of you that have not started that yet, but also want to work towards that, whether on the side or as a full time thing, because and I'm going to say this now and probably a thousand times after finding the right education for the thing you want to do is way more important and way more beneficial than just going and getting an education. When somebody says go get an education, I don't know what that means. Like, what is it you want to do with this education? Whereas what I'm saying is find the education for the thing that you want to do and then implement that. I can't, I can't mention how many um, classes, or I say classes, courses. And courses have had this really weird, bad connotation because there are a lot of really good, we'll say marketers, who then later just become known as scammers or whatever because they sold a digital course. And the only reason that they have a ton of money and they got wealthy is because they sold shitty courses to people who don't know a whole lot and they're just preying on... And some of that for sure is true. But for me, oh man, when it came to learning local SEO, uh, just Google in general, Facebook ads, uh, you know, sales funnels, copywriting, you know, email marketing and retargeting, all those different topics you had to go find somebody that was a good source. Like there are tried and true methods and, and basically instructors of these things that you can go find and, and buy. And I highly encourage it. And then aside from all those tactics, you know, that you get in the sales and marketing and copywriting and, and whatever uh, courses, there's also the, the psychology of being an entrepreneur and the, the mental strain that, you know, that comes with it. And then figuring out how to handle that. I haven't bought as many courses in that, but I've definitely read a lot of books. I've, I've, I've tried a lot of techniques to kind of wrap my brain around what I, ha what I have to do, what needs to be done, and how to do it in the most efficient way that benefits the business that I'm working on or in, and then also benefits you know my family life and all the outside stuff. And again, it just goes back to being of service. That's my main thing, whether it's being of service to my own business, a business owner that I'm working with, being of service to my kids, being of service to my wife, being of service to anybody that, that I'm around. And I also have like a lot of, and this is just me, you might not have this type of ambition and I get it. Um, it's not for everybody, but I want to make some of these courses and products and podcasts and videos and free stuff and paid stuff to then benefit all of the little ones in my, my family coming up, whether it's my twins, nieces and nephews, they're all under 10 right now. And they're all little entrepreneurs. One, two, three, four, five, at least, 
yeah, five of the six, five out of seven have already started the lemonade stands. Um, they're, they're doing their own just little businesses. And it's really, really cool. Arts and crafts, uh, making things with their hands. We have some really good artists in the family. And they've, you know, gone to uh, local events where it's like a local market. And they have like the parents have something that the kids do or it's all kids. That was one of the coolest ones where we went to a, a market and it was all just young entrepreneurs. And there were some really cool products. We had woodworkers and painters and Anyway, that's what that's what I really love to see because you can't convince me otherwise, but business, small business entrepreneurship is the backbone of this country. It is what can give you as much financial freedom and as much time freedom, which is the most important thing to me as possible. The money's great. It's an awesome cherry on top. It's a great tool. But when you're talking about time, that's the thing I want the most. And hopefully that's the thing that I can help you guys get the most. Uh, and it's it's quality time too, like good time, not just time to like you know, rack your brain about all the stress you have in your life, but just good time that you can enjoy with those around you that you want to. So, uh, hey, hit like on the video. If you're watching the video, uh, subscribe to the podcast, share it with a friend, give me all the great reviews and all that stuff. But most importantly, go to robertgarzamedia.com. Sign up for the newsletter on the page. Uh, hit all the links if you want to listen on Spotify or anywhere else. And uh, book a call if you'd like. I don't know how, how long I'll do the one-on-one -on -one calls. I've done a few already, and it's been cool. And I'm going to take on another um, actual, you know, one-on-one -on -one type of client and work with them for a couple of weeks, if not once. And that's going to be fun because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a lot of that and bring it to you guys in the form of free content. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, hopefully more beyond that. But yeah, I'll see you soon again on the solo episodes and then with my wife to do the couples episodes. Peace out, everybody. Enjoy your day.